There's something completely different from any vlog that I've ever done in Thailand today. This is the Thai freeze-dry factory behind me. I'm going to be talking with the owner. I woke up many mornings asking myself if I was absolutely crazy or not. <laughs> um, and I'm going to be giving you a tour around the factory. This is going to be a very insightful vlog for those that are interested in herbs and supplements and how they're actually produced and how there can be a lot of fake stuff out there and how is the real stuff really done. We're also going to be taking a look at their freeze-dried process and it is unique to them there's nowhere else like this in the world there's nobody else in the world using a machine like this to be honest it looks like a time machine we're going to show it to you we're going to talk to the owner and we're going to get a hell of a lot of detail this is going to be very insightful thanks for coming along for the vlog so the first question i have for you is how did you get here in thailand how long ago did you arrive and the first trip i made to thailand was in 1970 when i was a graduate student at the university of hawaii and uh uh, so I've been coming back every now and then, um, and then uh, about uh, about the year 2000, I decided to retire. <clears throat> I came here uh, to retire because I'd been here visiting uh, several times, and I just love Thailand. And uh, um, I completely failed at retirement. <laughs> Yeah, you don't look very retired. <laughs> you know, after about six months of retirement, I was fed up with it. I, I still believe that one of the most important things you have to do to keep your health is to just stay very active, including keeping your mind active. I call it uh, um, anticipation. You've got to wake up every morning looking forward to what you're doing. It doesn't have to be work. It could be anything. But if it's nothing, your health goes down the tubes very quickly. So. Um, I got real bored of uh, retirement, decided to use my background in natural agriculture and, and processing foods to improve the way things were being done here. And so I started uh, this company in 2004 to start freeze drying um, Thai herbs. And in the process, we developed a whole new freeze drying technology, um, which is um, still not used anywhere else in the world so the machines you're going to see later today are the only machines like them and when people who are real familiar with freeze drying look at our factory they go in and they say what the hell is that because it's very very different than what everybody else is uh, doing okay so this is where the product comes in and it's uh, inspected and washed um, there's a loading dock on the other side of that gate on the outside. Um, what are we doing here today? Smells delicious. It smells herbal. Holy basil. Holy basil, yeah. Okay. Holy basil. So the product comes in. It's chopped. We chop the products. We put it in these um, bags where the water can flow through. And we circulate it here. This is a cleaning process. At the same time, we're cleaning it with uh, water. We're also injecting ozonated water to clean up any microbes that might be there. Uh, sometimes in the fields or in the transportation, you can have some kind of contamination or microbial issues. And so the, um, the aqueous ozone um, will kill the harmful bacteria, but it will not damage the healthy compounds. Mm -hmm. If you use gamma radiation or extreme heat, no heat, it's, not, it's non specific, so you're killing everything. Most of the microbes are either neutral, they don't do anything at all, one way or much or other for us, or they're healthy. Only a very small percentage are, are uh, dangerous. And of course, the FDA and we test for those dangerous um, microbial and heavy metals, but uh, this. A process with the ozone really to make sure we don't have a microbial problem. Is this locally sourced holy basil? Or Absolutely. Yeah. Everything's locally sourced, anything we can. Again, we want it to be very fresh. So this just came from the farm this morning. Wow. Okay. It looks like a time machine. Yeah, well, <laughs> this, it looks nothing like a freeze dry machine, I can tell you that, okay? Um, but it absolutely is. Um, what, what we've done is created a whole new uh, process to, in freeze drying. Um, normally a freeze dry machine, is, it sort of looks like a big baker's oven 
Uh, there are trays. You put the product on the trays and uh, you freeze dry the, the product while it sits on the trays. The problem there is that the process by which it dries while it's frozen, which is sublimation, only affects the exposed surface area. So if you were to put the product on the trays, let's say this thick, mm -hmm. the top would dry, the bottom would dry, the inside won't dry. So consequently, you can only put the products on the trays maybe Thin. three quarters of an inch thick. Mm. Now we're talking about leaves and flowers that don't weigh much to begin with. So you've got this big expensive machine and you can only put a very small quantity in the machine. And if that's 85% water, after three days, you're getting out 11 kilos, 15 kilos. I mean, you know, our customers want metric tons. <laughs> uh, so we struggled with the conventional freeze-dry machines for about five years. And all we could really do was make capsules for the local market. The idea of producing metric tons to ship all over the world with the conventional freeze-dry machines is very, very uh, challenging mm -hmm. because um, you, they're, there are huge freeze-dry machines, but they still have the same problem. You yeah. can still only put so much product into the, you know, on these trays. So it takes too long, it too takes many people Too involved. long, too much energy, too many people, very low production, yeah. and therefore high cost, okay? Um, so as we did that for five years and realized this is really um, not going to, you know, create a large business. What can we do to improve this? Uh, and the answer, of course, is how can we increase the exposed surface area to the process of sublimation? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we came up with the uh, concept. Other people may have had the concept too, but no one's been able to build the machine. And the concept is instead of the product sitting motionless on trays, one piece covering another, what if it was flying around in a vortex? We want to increase the um, quantity that can be exposed to the sublimation process. And so we came up with this concept of having it flying around in a vortex rather than sitting motionless on trays. And that increases the exposed surface area not a little bit tremendously mm -hmm. uh, different for different products but maybe around 50 times so you would get a much faster process it would be much drier because of that huge exposed surface area we get almost always under two percent moisture content sometimes even under one percent moisture content at the end of the process in a conventional freeze dry machine you'd be happy with five or six percent moisture content oh. the less water the better it is preserved so this is faster, okay, much drier, okay, and that's why we spent three and a half years to create this system where we freeze dried it while the product was flying in a uh, flying in a vortex. Is this vessel here? This is the vortex this, inside. This is the this is our old machine over here. Uh, this will hold about between 300 to 500 kilos of raw material and produce the powder in one day. This is our new machine over here. This will hold between 1,500 to 2,000 kilos of raw material and dry it in one day. Okay. Uh, so this really gives us the uh, power to um, produce really large quantities. Looks like you decided really to double, double the bubble. Uh, five times, <laughs> five, X. Five, five X, okay. <laughs> We went 5x on this one. It was rather in industrious, but... Um, was this any risk to you, Dan, to do this or not, like in terms of investment? Oh, I, well, I, 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 woke up, I woke up many mornings asking myself if I was absolutely crazy or not. <laughs> um, many, many challenges. This was very difficult. The, the principles are actually pretty simple. Uh, the machine is very complex. And just before we continue the tour with my friend Dan, I'm going to hand you over to my friend Brendan in Phuket, whose product actually comes from this factory. Hey guys, great to connect with you. I'm Brendan O'Neill, founder of Fruiting Body Mushrooms. And today I'm going to explain a little bit of our backstory and what we're all about. I know Ryan has been explaining a lot about lion's mane mushrooms and that product stays true to my heart and why I started this company. Uh, my grandfather was diagnosed with Alzheimer's many years ago and he did die from that. 
I did some research and understood that you could reduce your chances by Alzheimer's and dementia by 60% by taking one gram of lion's mane per day. I could not find any products on the market and decided to actually uh, source a reliable supplier that could provide high quality lion's mane extracts. Now we've spoke a lot about that in recent episodes and you've seen all across Ryan's channel. So today I'm gonna talk about cordyceps. Now, cordyceps mushrooms, it's mainly to boost VO2 max levels and energy and even boost that libido. Many of Ryan's subscribers have reached out to me and asked many questions of how cordyceps can help their day-to-day -day life. And mostly they're using it to take for their morning walks in the morning and give that extra energy that could be required. If you're interested in more information on cordyceps or our other mushroom products, Ryan's gonna leave a link down in the description. Our products are only available in Thailand and currently on Lazada, and we hope to be able to ship internationally as soon as possible. Uh, again, thanks to listen to me ramble on, and it's been great to connect with you guys. I'm gonna answer all the questions in the comments and anything I can do to help. So in this process, we found something that we didn't expect. That's the eureka moment. You know, you're doing something, you're going, whoa, what's going on here? What we found in the normal freeze dry machine, where you've got the product laid out in trays, when the product dries, uh, it's not powder. It's drying, but it's in lumps and clumps. And you have to put, put the product through an intense grinding process in order to create the powder, okay? Now, two things can happen there. Number one, the friction can cause heat, which would negate some of the effects of having freeze-dried it in the first place. Mm -hmm. So you can prevent that if you close down your machine and let it cool off and then start it up again. But due to the fact that people want to make money, I can tell you with a lifetime of experience in this business, mostly they don't shut it down and let it dry. They're they grinding know. away as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So you've got the potential there to damage the product by introducing heat in the grinding process through the friction of grinding. Okay? The other thing is that um, in, in this uh, grinding process, it's smashing and crashing the, the, the product and just hemorrhaging the molecular and cellular structure of the product. Mm -hmm. This intense grinding is not good for the active compounds in the, in the product. Okay. So um, uh, we avoid this intense grinding process because what we found in our machine, our eureka moment as we started to develop this was that we didn't have to grind it, that the product, the motion of the, of the, motion of the frozen particles just basically crashing into one another was calling, causing the, it to fall into a beautiful fine powder right in the machine with no mechanical grinding. And that became really interesting to us because the particle structure is completely different. But it's only half the story. Mm -hmm. The other half the story is the pharmacological analysis. That's what happens inside your body. How does this product interact with your body's adaptive systems? Okay. And here we really shine because this powder is so much more easily absorbed and metabolized by your uh, body. It took us three and a half years to get the first machine to work properly. <laughs> That's why I say I, I you know, woke up uh, sometimes early in the morning um, trying to figure out whether I was out of my mind or not. <laughs> I, I mean, was it close? It, it took obviously substantial investment and, and some risk. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. It got close, and, and you, did you say you were in this business previously, though, before I, coming to Thailand? I, I did have a freeze dry factory in Honolulu, Hawaii. Mm. Um, we were using conventional freeze dry machines, and uh, we were mostly freezing, freeze drying flowers for the Japanese wedding industry, and you would need that kind of machine to do that. This machine only produces powder. Because mm -hmm. okay. um, the flowers would be destroyed yes, in the process. Yes, because the flowers would be yeah. destroyed in, in the, the vortex. process. Yeah. So what I was doing in Hawaii was actually quite difficult because you had to keep the color and keep the shape and keep everything. <laughs> so there were a lot of pre-treatments and post-treatments. Uh, I learned how to freeze dry on a very difficult uh, project. Okay, so. That's what we that's what we uh, were doing in uh, Honolulu, Hawaii. So I had a background in freeze drying before I came here. I also had a background in organic agriculture. I had a 
a 25-acre tropical fruit farm on the Hamakua coast of the Big Island mm -hmm. of Hawaii. And um, so I had uh, a lifetime experience in natural agriculture and nine years experience in freeze drying before I even came here. So. And if you were to put turmeric in there, how long is the process going to take? The, pro the process is one day. Oh, it's one day? It's one day. Um, it usually it's in this machine for about 16 to 18 hours. And then there's a cleaning process every single time, even if you're doing the same product again. You have to clean the filters, clean the machine. So basically it's a one day, mm -hmm. it's a one day process. Everything is packed in vacuum sealed uh, bags. Um, because uh, first of all there's no water here because we've eliminated almost all the water there's no water there's no air and we put it in uh, master cartons to prevent it from being exposed to sunlight and so in this condition um, this product will last for five years um, what is your motivating factor what's your inspiration behind this only because it's a topic you're interested in or is there any other reasons why you are driven to do this kind of thing yeah, well, I think that the best business plan could possibly be summed up in two words, and that's help people, okay? Um, I, I consider this sort of my legacy, and, um, uh, you know, when you help people, I think you can't help but succeed. And um, so we're just into growing and being able to help as many people as we can, you know, eat healthier and live healthier. Everything we produce is organically grown, and um, it's just because of our process, it's at a higher quality level, um, therefore it can help people more effectively. Uh, so uh, other, th the same herb might be uh, good to take, um, but you know, our herb will be uh, more experiential. You'll feel it quicker and you'll feel it faster and, and stronger. Um, and. Um, it's just going to improve. It's going to improve your health. For somebody that knows absolutely nothing about freeze drying, um, what is the process of freeze drying, and what is it you've developed here that's going above and beyond freeze drying in some ways? Yeah, freeze drying is based on a natural principle, like which is called sublimation. Okay, um, uh, it is a natural principle. The first people to uh, freeze dry were probably the Incas who might not have understood it with our terminology but they knew that if they brought their potatoes and their vegetables up to the very high top of the mountains and buried them in the snow that that was the best way to preserve their their food uh, the high altitude creates a low atmospheric pressure and the cold temperature they're essentially were freeze drying so um, Basically, what you're trying to do is you're trying to dry the product. You're trying to remove the water. And the reason you're doing that is because the microbes and the enzymes that naturally degrade these products, these products are designed by nature to degrade when they're removed from their life cycle, when they're harvested. And um, if you remove the water, um, the enzymes and the microorganisms that degrade the product can't function. And so the product is effectively uh, preserved by being dried. So that's why we are doing this. And really, all we're really doing here is removing water. Um, is there any particular supplement that you use or uh, that, that you have seen um, quite shocking results with, with other people? Yeah, I mean, we won't produce something that doesn't have shocking results. <laughs> why, why bother making something that doesn't have you know, and doesn't have really noticeable uh, results. The biggest products for us, uh, our biggest product is a sprouted black rice. Black rice is a very rare variety of rice compared to white rice. And um, it has more antioxidants per teaspoon than, than uh, blueberries or acai or cranberries or any of these other foods that are noted for high antioxidants. It's in those dark pigments that create the black uh, color, the dark purple color, is where you have the anthocyanin species, and these are where your antioxidants are uh, located. So it's very, very rich in antioxidants, but it has lots of other health benefits as well. And so uh, we actually sprout the black rice first, 
um, because all rice, rice and all grains are all um, dormant. They can be stored for years in a silo unless you start milling them. Once you mill them, you have to use them quickly. But if you don't mill them, they can sit for years. They're dormant. Um, sprouting um, uh, neutralizes the chemical compounds that enforce this dormancy and it starts to grow. Uh, these these um, are designed to grow when the right growing conditions exist. Like a seed? Like a seed, yeah, seeds, grains. I mean, you'll go into a 2,000 year old tomb in Egypt and they'll find seeds <laughs> and they give it the proper water and soil and it grows again. Mm -hmm. So rather than eating something that's dormant, if you eat something that's sprouted and it's actually come alive and it's genetically developing into, uh, into uh, so the, the answer there is would you rather eat something that's dead or dormant or you, what, would you rather eat something that's growing and alive? Mm -hmm. Okay, so sprouting is very much recognized as being able to increase the enzyme profile, increase the nutri nutrient profile and make it easier for your body to uh, digest and absorb. And so we sprout the product first and then we freeze dry the sprouts. The problem with sprouts is that they have a very short shelf life and if they get, if they spoil it can be dangerous. Um, so because of mold, yes, yeah, mold and just it, it's it's very energetic, and so things that are very energetic spoil faster, and um, it will it will uh, spoil quickly. Uh, so as soon as it sprouts, we freeze dry it, and now we have the power of the sprout, but in a stable commodity because it's been freeze dried. Almost sounds like magic. <laughs> well, yeah, nature is uh, n nature is pretty darn incredible. Okay. And may I ask, bringing it to, to, to Thailand as well, was there a particular reason why you chose Thailand uh, as a country to do this, this from? Or is it, is it your personal relationship with the country? Is it where you wanted to be? Uh, was it a coincidence? Or is it because the ingredients that produce tea are of high quality? Or? Yes, and you need to be, you want to be, and particularly why in Chiang Mai instead of Bangkok or something. Um, you want to be very close to where your raw materials are, are grown. Uh, because if you bring the product to us and it's not fresh um, and it's already begun to degrade, uh, we, we can't make it better, okay? <laughs> um, you'll get, you know, garbage in, garbage out. So you want the product very fresh. Our policy is basically to have the product harvested in the morning and in our factory into the process that afternoon or as closely to that as humanly possible uh, because uh, you've got to start with fresh product to wind up with good results. So you want to be near your source of raw materials. Um, that's why Thailand and particularly Chiang Mai. So that completes the freeze-dry, Thai freeze-dry factory tour. I hope you found this very interesting, guys. Uh, big thank you to Dan for taking me around here. It's been very, very interesting, very, very educational. What they're doing here is um, something very different to what's going on around the world in this, this particular process. It's a very unique educational insight that you've, uh, you've had here. And I think one of the first looks into this factory and what Dan is actually doing here. So thanks a lot, Dan, for taking yeah, me around. My pleasure. Thank you.